<laughs> What's up, y'all? So in this video, we are gonna talk about Schlage lockouts. Now, y'all know I don't really teach or show picking locks unless I'm just doing it in the course of whatever I'm having to do. Uh, but in this case, I wanted to share with you a little tip or a trick or whatever you wanna call it about Schlage doorknobs. And so those of you who have been locksmiths for a while may know this, but we also have some people who are just getting into the trade and uh, just wanted to teach you a little trick about that. Now, when you unlock a doorknob, of course, when you get called out to unlock a property, most of the time somebody has pulled the door shut behind them and it's just the doorknob. So of course you check your driver's license or any applicable stuff to prove that they're supposed to be in the house and then you get to work opening the lock. So in most cases, like I said, you're gonna have like a gatehouse or quickset or wiser or uh, Schlage. Now Schlage, in my opinion, might be the very easiest one to do, not in the fact that it's easy to pick, but in the fact that there is a way to not have to worry about spinning it. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with that, locks pick either way, just like the key would turn to the left or turn to the right, except in old wiser, they only unlocked. But in most stuff nowadays, you can turn the key to the left to lock it or to the right to lock it or vice versa. So when you're picking a lock to get into a property, you uh, sometimes are able to pick the lock to the locked position much easier than you are to the unlocked position. And that's where your plug spinners come into play. I'm gonna get my kit out. And no matter what you use, and you know, you could use Lucy, you could use your dang dude rake, you could do a bump key, you could do uh, the uh, HPC disc. Somebody asked about this in live. I, I like this disc. For certain applications, there's a bunch of ways to get into stuff. So uh, whatever your preferred method of entrance is, almost invariably you're gonna need at some point in your career to spin the lock because when you get to the doorknob you pick and pick and pick to what you might think is the unlocked position and then it picks and guess what it's in the locked position so you have to use your plug spinner on most locks, of course, to spin it to the unlocked position. And what happens with the plug spinner, and I've got two different kinds here. Thanks, HKS, for this one. This is the A1 Spinnaker. Uh, still a little bit sketched out about this. I've only used it a handful of times. This just broke. My wire just broke after 20 years of use, so I had to replace it. I thought that would be easy, and it, it wasn't. Anyway, the way a plug spinner works, no matter what brand is, is basically... You twist it up like this, and you twist and you push it in and it puts tension on it and then you hit it and it spins the plug past the shear line or where it isn't normally in rest and it allows it to go to the unlocked position. The only problem with these is they do fail. They fail and as Murphy's Law dictates, the longer it takes to open a door, the more likely your spin is gonna fail. Now, when you have a, say a defiant, I don't know what this is, this may be a defiant or a gatehouse or something, in the locked position, and, and that's with, this one's definitely a defiant, uh, in the locked position, the retainer, which is the, the pin that holds the knob on, it, it won't press in, and that's obviously for a good reason, because uh, when it's, locked you you can't uh you can't push and, and pull it off so even if i pick this to the locked position it still wouldn't press in because uh and some of them you do have to turn the knob obviously to turn the knob it has to be in the unlocked position so on all of those yes you do have to spin the lock however that brings us to schlage now schlage f-series i've done a lot of videos over the years on schlage f-series and about three or four years ago, they changed the the standard F series, which is the the style. They've changed it many times. Now they have what compressible or the you know the the compressible cylinders. Back in the day, uh, they had a, a standard cylinder, and on it it had two retainer, two detents, and the detent is what's used to remove the knob. So in this case, uh, this is the compressible cylinder style. I've got it picked 
to the locked position. So let's just assume I'd gotten on the job and I'm like, pick, 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 it's like forever. And then, oh my God, I finally got it. But guess what? I got it to the locked position. So naturally, just like with any other lock, you would grab your preferred spinner. Let's try this because I, I do need to get more practice in. So uh, let's pull the camera up and, and you would you would come over here and you'd say, okay, we're gonna spin this guy because it's in the locked position and there's no other way to do it. So in this case, the plug is turned this way. You can see how it's, how it's pre-picked here. And uh, also I would point out, depending on, uh, depending on what plug spinner you have, I like the, to angle the tips a little bit. Otherwise, it's really hard to get it in there. When you insert this, right, when you're using a plug spinner, if it's halfway, like if you have a number nine pin and it's sticking way down, sometimes your spinner will only go like halfway in. Uh, and you think, hey, that's okay, I'll just try it. Don't do that. The, really, with almost all plug spinners, it needs to be bottomed out to function correctly. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, you know, you're on the job, we got it picked, it's locked. You're like, oh, shoot. So I'm gonna turn it back to about 45 degrees. Uh, you know, halfway between the stop position and the relock position. And uh, then we're gonna turn this like, uh, nope, it doesn't go that way because obviously when you let it go, it spins this way, it would spin it back. So in this case, we need to turn it, oh, come on. We need to turn it this way. And on this one, uh, that's a pretty weak, I, I turned it and you know, that doesn't have much spin power. So on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and go two full turns just like that i'm going to go ahead and turn this back get it inserted all the way just like that turn it to the about 45 degree position and then we're going to hold this steady and push our button okay so guess what we just failed so guess what that means that means that we have to pick the lock all over again and in our position, in our job, it is not fun to us. That is not fun when that happens. We hate when that happens, especially given the fact that we have to turn around and pick it all over again. And like I said, as Murphy Law dictates, it may take even longer because of that. So I wanted to show you one little trick that you could do just with the Schlage brand locks. Try and get it back re-picked to the locked position. And uh, so we're back where we were before. And once again, we're gonna grab our spinner, but you know what? We are not gonna do that. We are not gonna risk it because with all Schlage F-Series, you can take a bent piece of metal. You can, uh, I've done a video on this being the best locksmith free tool out there. This is a Schlage Smart Key Rekey. But you notice I've got it bent in an angle like this. So one of the hardest parts here is, you know, it's up against a wall and it's kind of hard to get to the retainer, which is why I have this bent little guy right here. But all Schlag F-Series in the locked position, the retainer is allowed to depress. So you simply get your tool. I'm gonna move this so you can see what I'm doing. But of course, again, it is always kind of tight because there's always something in the way. We're gonna get in there just like that. Again, it's in the locked position. And we're gonna push it just like that. And voila, we don't even have to worry about spinning it or picking it or anything. You can take a pair of pliers needle nose pliers come in there just like that and grab that bar and bam unlocked get the customer's key and put it back on one thing i'd do instead of having to carry pliers because y'all seen my pin kit is that locked yes yeah, that's locked my pin kit i don't really carry a pair of pliers in my pin kit however i did take this little double this is an automotive tension wrench what I did, and you can do this to any flat piece of metal that you have in your pen kit, is just grind a little notch in it. Take that, put it right there. Boom. And you are open. Again, that works with knobs. 
and it works with levers. So, you know, quick sets sometimes are tougher than others to open, but when you look at it this way, you, uh, you can pick it either way and not have to worry so much about the spin fail. Everybody hates the spin fail. And the reason that works is because Schlage uses this, ooh, spider, uses this uh, oval style plug like that. So no matter which way it is, it turns, it's gonna have the oval where you're able to depress the retainer. So anyway, I hope that helps y'all because there's nothing worse than a spin fail and it almost always is gonna happen when it took forever to open the lock to begin with. So just remember that next time you have a Schlage lever handle or doorknob lockout, like I said, doesn't work on these because in the locked position, I think that's in the locked position, it's in the locked position. Even if we turned uh, the core, you can't, uh, even with it turned, it, it won't, uh, it won't depress because it's in the lock position. It uses a totally different setup. So again, Schlage lockouts made just a little bit easier without having to worry about spin failure. Thanks for watching, y'all. If you have any questions or comments or any ideas of your own, post them in the comment section, and we'll catch y'all next video.